In this video I'm going to rig a cat. Now I'm looking at reference video of the skeleton of the cat so I can see the underlying structure because in these areas of cat we can't really see where the bone is. Um, but this has been set up in a way that actually is showing us how the, the bone is structured. So this is the hip joint around here um, and then we've got a bone coming across the front of the leg, another joint here, down to the feet um, and this is the kind of uh, the toes and the metatarsals. Um, similarly on the front we have the shoulder, the shoulder blades come down rather than across the body, it's not wide, um, and then we are from the front coming down towards that point here, um, down near the ankle and then into the other parts there. Um, and the neck will probably come straight up the back up to the skull towards that. Um, and then there's a series of joints along the back for the tail. We don't have to have so many when we're doing this. Um, we have a very simplified skeleton, um, but it works in a very similar way. So once I've got the reference done, I can go into Maya and I'm just going to start a new scene. And from the content browser, you can select this cat here and this will work for um, most animals um, but it is worth looking at the skeleton for the individual animal as you go forward. So x-ray joints so I can see what I'm working with. I'm in the rigging menu set so I've got my skeleton and, and skin options uh, and the shelf for rigging. Now I am going to use inverse kinematics in this, create an inverse kinematic handle on the foot um, and there is a shortcut here to do a smooth bind for this animal. So let's close that tab and take a four up view. So shift A lines up the animal in each of these uh, in viewports and I'll just again check my reference and I can see that works along here. So what I'm going to do is just bring that, I have a second monitor so I'm going to bring that across so I can use that as reference as I work. Um, you could import the picture or work however you you need to with that. So I'm just going to put x-ray joints on this view as well and I'm going to start a little bit away from the edge of the tail and start the bone here. Start the bones here, and so that one won't move, that will move the whole um, creature. So I'm just going to start that off by having a couple of joints quite close to each other, um, and as we get further down the tail, I can spread those out a bit. Uh, and then when I get to the end, press enter, reselect the, the tool I'm working with, and then just take that forward across the top of the spine along here and up towards the head there. Um, I don't have to use this top joint to bring out extensions towards the front of the face. It is useful as I showed you in the, the shark rigging video. It is useful to have extra joints um, such as ribs and this is the same case so these will actually pin parts of the face for me and make rigging significantly easier. So the next stage I really want to do is the legs so I can come off of this joint which is the hips and so now I really need to look at the top view um, and we're going to come right out to about here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to have an, a little side joint there, just so I have a bit more flexibility on moving that. If I move the hips, it will move the whole creature. Um, and looking at that in the other views, I need to move and undo. I need to move that one lower. 
before I restart. So that's actually inside the object now. Um, and so I can pick up from that joint uh, and bring that down to here, across the ankle, down to the toes, and across there. So what I want to do is, so that's a left rear, left rear leg. So when I see that in the hierarchy, I'll know, know which one it is, and I can drop that down. But uh, I would normally try and name that a little bit more. So this one, uh, I'm going to bring down for a kind of shoulder blade down to about there. Uh, it's possibly a bit further forward. Um, then down in the cat's foot here. It's fairly reasonable, but it is in the center. So I can see that's coming down the center. So I'm going to go to the front view and just bring that joint across. Let's enter that or settle that one. Uh, let me select it in this view. And that right across there so it's inside that leg and rename it left front leg so just as I did with the shark's fin I can then mirror that joint uh, I've got capitals on my naming here so I'll capitalize this so I'll just be consistent and I'm going across the Y and Z axis again on my options with that um, so if I apply that that goes across and similarly I want to do the same for that one um, and then apart from adding in any rib joints to make sure I've got a uh, a better um, Bind. So I'll just add some in. I'm going to add some straight down in this case. So it's kind of abstracted, um, but it is quite a bit quicker to do this way. Um, uh, the more detail you get in this, the actual uh, the easier it will be to rig. Or when you bind, you won't have to do so much painting of skin weights uh, and. That just gives you that proximity of certain parts of the body and it will stop the legs moving so much. Uh, it's always a good idea to save your work. So don't forget to do that. And finally, I will select the skeleton and the mesh and do a bind skin. I've also got the paint weight quick rig, uh, paint skin weights here that is useful that I will will need. Um, but to just see how I've how I've made that work now, I can then just rotate that leg. There's a little movement on the body, but not too much on the bottom of the under the belly. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, and now, if I wanted to just use inverse kinematics, I should be able to take the inverse kinematic tool um, and clip between two of the joints so if I want to move that foot as an inverse kinematic it's actually not bent so it might not fully work um, but once I've set that up it has got an inverse kinematic handle um, and that should allow that to, to bend so that's a straight line that's not actually going to work. So what I'm going to do is show you on the, the back leg where I've got a bend in it in the correct way and you'll see how that works a lot better. So I've deliberately done a very straight leg on the front 
um, but just a small bend in that would, would help. So bringing this joint forward and uh, making that work. So now if I use this back one, you can see how that's actually moving up and down um, with an inverse kinematic relationship. So that will help. Um, there is obviously complications and you might want to choose which which joints you're going to use the inverse kinematics on. So you may want to go from the top of the hips here down to the mid part of the leg. So if I do that on on this, then you've got a different type of movement. Um, so consider what you need, consider what works for you and, and try that out. Uh, when you get to the the tail, you can use a spline uh, even, okay, we need some ribs on the, or some painting on the, painting weights on the, the base of that because uh, that's not holding in a particularly good way. Um, I have showed you that before, but um, just to show you that again, we should be able to select the mesh, select this tool here, um, and what I would do, I've got the hips here. So I would just paint that to 100% around this area and that will hold hold that a lot better. Now I'd probably work with slightly higher resolution oops, slightly higher resolution mesh um, when I was doing a final model um, but uh, this is okay, so you can see that's actually holding that a bit better there, so I'd, I would go and add extra weights. I may add another bone in that and re rig it. So that's the fundamentals of, of making a quadruped um, with the head. Uh, I, I can move the uh, joints there, it's holding fairly well because of the bone structure in there. Um, the head isn't deforming very much. So that's showing you inverse kinematics. Um, obviously, I've showed you paint skin weights before, but that's really kind of creating your own um, rig from scratch. Um, if we look at the outliner, I have uh, very poor naming on this, so that's probably the tail. Um, and what you really want to do, here you go, joint 21, which has the, the legs on it. Um, as we go down the spine, we should get the other uh, other legs as well. So uh, you can see from this why I would suggest you, you rename it. Um, it does take a little while, but actually when you're working with it in the hierarchy um, it is a lot easier. So that's a basic rig for a quadruped.